Hi students, welcome to the science class. In today's session, under the chapter of natural resources, what are natural resources and what are their importance and what, what the human activities will affect on the natural resources that will be studied under the chapter of natural resources. So, life on the earth it is possible due to the presence of, due to the uses of some of the materials which are present on the earth surface. For example, life it is possible due to the presence of oxygen, due to the presence of water, due to the presence of plants it, and also it is possible due to the presence of some of the minerals which are present on the earth surface. So, the, the all the materials which we are going to helpful for for the man which may we are going to get from the nature that is are called it as a natural resources. So, that the presence of that natural resources it, it will be helpful for the life which is present on the earth surface. So, now one question arises what is meant by the natural resources. So, what are natural resources? So, the natural resources are nothing but these are the materials which are present on the nature and that are helpful for the human activities that are called it as the natural resources. Once again I am repeating here the minerals are the materials which are present in the nature and that are useful for the human activities then such a type of the materials are called it as a natural resources. For example, air, water, minerals, plants, wildlife these are all example for the natural resources and under one it is important natural resource that is nothing but the sunlight the life it is on the earth it is present due to the only two conditions one it is a water and another one it is a light these are the most important concepts the most important materials so another one it is air so these three components are the main important components for the presence of the life on the earth so now we are going to study the resources with the four phases so on the earth surface we are going to get the natural resources with the help of the four surfaces, four spheres that we will study now. The first surface or the first layer it is nothing but the outermost crust of the earth that is called it as a lithosphere. See here, we are going to get the natural resources from the earth in a four different spheres or four different layers. So, the first layer it is nothing but the, the outermost crust of the earth surface that is called it as a lithosphere. From the lithosphere we can get uh, plenty of the materials, plenty of minerals, the gold, the iron, the silver, isn't it? So, all the metals and non-metals, some of the non-metals which are going to get from the earth crust that is are present in the minerals, isn't it? We are going to get the ore from the minerals. So, these are the lithosphere contains many plenty number of minerals are the materials which are present in the earth crust that are used by utilized by the human being. So, the first surface or the first sphere of the earth surface that is a lithosphere under the lithosphere we can get plenty of the natural resources and the second sphere are the second space that is nothing but the water covers 75 percent of the earth surface water covers 75 percent of the earth surface that is covered by the sea water and also some amount of the water will be present under the earth under the earth crust combining the water present on the earth surface and the water present inside the earth crust we are going to call it as an it comprises to an hydrosphere it is another one space or under one sphere of the earth which we are going to get the natural resources from the another one surface that is nothing but the hydrosphere. From the hydrosphere we are going to get plenty of materials minerals from the hydrosphere also and third sphere it is nothing but the air. The air that covers the whole earth like a blanket it is called it as a atmosphere. The third surface or the third sphere which we are going to get the plenty of natural resources are nothing but that is atmosphere. So, the air which is covers on the earth surface like a blanket has a plenty a many number of gases. So, that gases are also helpful for the life present on the earth 
earth surface so therefore we are going to classify the spheres or surfaces on the earth for the presence of the natural resources that is nothing but hydrosphere and the last sphere that is nothing but all living things the all living things present under the water present on the earth surface present on the air all living things uh, in the on the earth together with the atmosphere hydrosphere and also lithosphere interact and make a life possible on earth this is known as a biosphere the fourth it is nothing but the life which is present on the earth the living organisms are the living things which are present on the earth which can utilize which can interact with the all three spheres that is the lithosphere and hydrosphere and atmosphere and that makes the presence of the life on the earth and that living things or the living organisms that will be called it as an a biosphere under the biosphere we can get biotic components and also abiotic components the under the biosphere we are going to see biotic components and abiotic components biotic components are nothing but living things living organisms isms a uh, biotic components are nothing but non living things so we can get the natural resources from the four spheres that are nothing but a lithosphere hydrosphere atmosphere and under one it is biosphere so we can study now the one by one natural resources what are the uses what are the effects of the human activities on the that natural resources and what are the causes of that activities now first i am considering one of the most important natural resource which is present on the earth surface that is helpful for the all living beings that is nothing but the air it is a mixture of different gases you have, you have to remember here the air is mixture of different gases but in our atmosphere about 71% of the nitrogen gas is present and remaining 30% some of the other gases are present but another one most important component which is present in the air it is nothing but the oxygen so oxygen it is main important component for the respiration process which are utilized by the living organisms or the living things which are present on the earth surface so therefore the air it is it is one of the most important natural resources which we are going to see in on the earth surface the oxygen it is a most important natural resource which is present in the atmosphere which is present in the air but so this air will be this air will be polluted by the human activities this air will be polluted by the human activities and what is the role of the atmosphere here so the air which covers the earth surface like a blanket that is called it as an atmosphere so what is the role of the air in that atmosphere this air is bad conductor of heat and this the we know already that the air it is a bad conductor of heat and it maintains the temperature of the earth surface during the day and during the night we have to remember here air it is a bad conductor of heat it doesn't allow the heat to go away easily and heat to absorb easily that's why this maintains the temperature of the earth surface and it keeps the average temperature of the earth it keeps the average temperature of the earth for example the movement of the air the movement of the air that causes the winds the beautiful phenomenon the beautiful phenomenon formed by the movement of the air that is nothing but the from the winds which we are going to see at the at the coastal area that's are nothing but the land bridge and the sea bridge the land bridge and the sea bridge these are the two natural phenomenon beautiful phenomenon which we are going to see in the coastal area what is the land bridge what is the sea bridge here i am first taking the sea bridge i am first taking the sea bridge here during the day what happens the earth the during the day the earth will be heater due to the presence of the sunlight more fastly than the water which is present in the sea for example if you are present in the sea remember here this is the earth you have to see here this is the sea i am considering this is the sea this is the earth during the day what happens due to the sunrise the rays of the due to the sun rays the earth will be heated very quickly 
rather than the water which is present in the sea the outer most the on the surface the air which is present on the earth surface that will be heated very quickly rather than the the uh, the wind which is the air which is present on the surface of the sea water and which causes when the air molecules when the oxygen molecules are the and the air molecules are heated due to the radiations of the sunlight energy that that the the air particles becomes lighter and that will be moves upwards the air particles which are present on the land surface becomes lighter and moves upward what happen here when the the heated air particles becomes moves upwards the space will be emptied here and that space will be covered by the cool air which is present in the sea the air comes from the sea that covers the empty part which is present on the land due to the due to the rising of the hot air particles due to the radiations of the sunlight here so once again i am repeating here what happens due to the sunlight radiations the air which is present on the land get that can be get heated and becomes they are lighter and that moves the air which is present on the land surface will move upwards isn't it and but comparatively the air which is present on the sea on the water level it doesn't heat quickly and when the these airs are heat the air which is present on the land surface it will be heated the air particles move upwards the space will be emptied here and the cool air which present on the sea which present on the water level that will be moves towards that will be moves towards the land and so the movement of the or the the motion of the air winds air from the sea towards land that is called it as a sea bridge here isn't it the motion of the air from the sea towards the land that is called it as a sea bridge therefore during the day the peoples which are present in the coastal area they experience the sea bridge and they can get the cold air coming from the sea towards the land and during the night what happens see here the earth will see here during the night what happens here during the night the earth will cools the earth will cools very quicker than the very quicker than the water because simultaneously earth and the water which is present in the sea and the land that will be heated due to the sunlight radiations therefore during the night the earth cools very faster than the sea the sea water and when it cools very faster the what happens here the water molecules the air molecules which are present in the sea the we are the air molecules which are present in the sea will rises up here will rises up and the cold air which is present in the land that will blows towards the sea and that it is called it as a land bridge by the help of the land bridge and the sea bridge the air molecules or the air present on on the earth, on the atmosphere that will be what happens that will be controls the average temperature of the earth is it clear so it is the one of the rule of the atmosphere which is present on the earth surface and the movement of the air from the reason one reason to the another reason that causes the wind see you have to remember here so uneven heating of the earth surface and the water that causes the winds here and the so wind how it is formed due to the the move, movement of the air from one reason to the another reason that causes the winds here due to the winds we are going to get the air isn't it we feel the presence of the air and what happens next it is the air pollution which we are going to study due to the human activities the atmosphere the air which is present in the atmosphere polluted how it is polluted so when we are going to use the fuels like liquid fuels petrol diesel such that that fuels when we are going to burn that fuels it releases nitrogen oxide sulfur dioxide like harmful substances to the atmosphere so 
uh, that increases so due to the carbon dioxide nitrogen dioxide and the uh, sulfur dioxide due to the increase in the level of the harmful substances like carbon dioxide nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide etc the air will be polluted why because these are the very harmful substance so when they are released to the atmosphere the air will be polluted here so what is air pollution the percentage of the increase of the harmful substances in the atmosphere that like the increase in the nitrogen dioxide increase in the sulfur dioxide and increase in the carbon dioxide etc that causes air pollution so what are the effects of the air pollution on the human and the plant here so air pollution causes some of the diseases and in the human beings or in the living beings that is breathing problems which we are going to see the first problem which is caused by the air pollution the second pol second it is we are going to we are going to uh, affect from the cancers we are going to affect from the cancer and third one it is earth burning so, sorry eye burning the eye burning which we are going to feel due to the the polluted air which is present in the environment and such a type of the diseases or the problems are caused by the air pollution here and what are the causes what are the causes which are present in the plant by the air pollution that is nothing but that will be decreases the growth of the plant and also that will be decreases the production yield of the plant that's are the under two this under two effects of the air pollution on the plants here so this is air pollution it is mainly due to the human activities by the use using of the large number of the vehicles and due to the smoke which is comes from the factories the number of factories are increasing day by day due to that the factories releases some of the harmful gases to the environment and that causes air pollution here so that air pollution it is the most dangerous and it will causes a very harmful active uh, effects on the human beings and also on the plants and another one most important natural resource which is present on the earth surface that is nothing but the rain rain it is formed by the evaporation and condensation of the water through the water cycle if you have already learned about the water cycle how the water will be recycled to form rain isn't it so rain it is formed by the evaporation and condensation of water through the water cycle see this a the water it is the another one most important natural resource which is present on the earth surface it is also one of the most essential material for the life which is present on the earth surface the one most essential mineral or material which is present on the earth that is nothing but the air and second one it is a water so water is the most essential requirement to present to 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 the to helpful for the life which is present on the earth surface so due to the air pollution due to the air pollution we are going to see we are going to see one important phenomena that is nothing but the acid rain if you have heard already heard the word acid rain what it means what is meant by the acid rain so what happens here when you are going to burn the fuels like petrol diesel or liquid fuels it releases the nitrogenous gases nitrogen dioxide carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide isn't it so when they are releases when you are going to use more amount of the fuels fossil fuels it releases more amount of the and the nitrogenous gases sulfur dioxide gases and carbon dioxide gases and that all gases are going to be collected at our atmosphere so when a rain comes when rain comes the water molecule which is present in the rain will mix it up with the gas which is present in our atmosphere so when the water will mix with uh, these gases the water will be converted into a acid for example the nitrogen dioxide which is present on the earth surface 
due to the, the it is present due to the using of the fossil fuels isn't it because when we are going to use the fossil fuels when you are going to burn the fossil fuels the some of the ni nitrogenous gases and uh, sulfuric gases are going to be evolved and collected at the atmosphere so when the rain comes that water molecules which mix with the nitrogenous gases so one example i am considering here nitrogen dioxide which is present on the atmosphere will mix with the water rain water and that will causes hno3 that is a nitric acid and the sulfur dioxide which is present on the atmosphere will mix with the water rain water and that causes sulfuric acid isn't it so the from this we feel that acid rain so when the water rain drops which is present on the cloud mixed with these gases that will be converted into acid and that will causes acid rain here so what is acid rain when a fossil fuels burns they release harmful gases like nitrogenous oxide and sulfur dioxide etc when these gases mix with the rain water that will causes acid rain so in your examination two marks question will be asked on this what is meant by the acid rain you have to remember here due to the air pollution acid rain due to the air pollution and the acid rain the carbon dioxide level which is present on the atmosphere increases the carbon dioxide level increases on the earth and that causes greenhouse effect so due to the air pollution and due to the acid rain the carbon percentage which is present on the earth surface that will be increases and that causes another one effect to the earth that is nothing but greenhouse effect what is the greenhouse effect here so due to the activity due to the human activity the due to the air pollution and due to the acid rain the carbon percentage on the earth surface or on the in the environment increases so when we are going to get the heat from the sunlight when the sun rays of the light rays of the sun will reaches the earth surface it radiates some of the light rays will be absorbed by the earth surface and the sum of the radiation will be again what happen here they go back towards the environment isn't it why because when the sun rays or rays of the sunlight comes towards the earth surface some amount of the light rays will be absorbed by the earth surface and some radiations will be reflected back towards the environment but when the carbon percentage increases on the earth surface that radiations will not go out of the earth and that will be stored inside the environment due to the presence of the carbon why because carbon it is a good absorber of the heat here carbon it is good absorber of the light rays therefore the uh, evolved radiations are not goes back to the environment away from the environment and that increases the heat average temperature of the earth here so this phenomenon it is known as the greenhouse effect what is greenhouse effect greenhouse effect it is nothing but the increase in the average temperature of the earth due to the presence of the carbon that is known as the greenhouse effect what is greenhouse effect the increase in the average temperature of the earth due to the presence of the carbon that is known as greenhouse effect and what are the effects of this greenhouse effect so it intensifies the greenhouse effect here so more what is the effects of the carbon here so increase in the carbon level what are the effects causes on the earth surface the increase in the carbon level in the atmosphere that causes intensifies the greenhouse effect it will be increases the greenhouse effect and second one well, the increase in the greenhouse effects leads to the increase in the average temperature of the earth surface increase in the greenhouse effects leads to the increase in the average temperature of the earth surface increase in the average temperature of the earth surface leads to the melting of the ice caps you have to remember here our earth surface has the ice caps on the both poles isn't it so melting of the ice caps will be done with because of the greenhouse effect why because when the average temperature of the earth increases that ice caps which are present on the earth surface they are starting melting so due to the increase in the greenhouse effect 
due to the increase in the average temperature of the earth due to the increase in the melting of the ice caps the coastal areas are submerged under the water what it means the living land becomes acquired by the melted water which is comes from the ice caps isn't it what happens the coastal areas are going to be one by one they are going to submerge under the water so the, the this are the, this is all are due to the increase in the carbon level in the environment that will be done only due to the human activities here now we are going to see what are the environmental problems caused by the human activities first under that is nothing but the depletion of ozone layer you have to remember here due to the human activities due to the more use of the fossil fuels the ozone the one of the productive layer which is present on the earth surface that will be get depleted so what is ozone layer what is ozone that will be seen now ozone layer present on the earth surface from 16 kilometer to 60 kilometer the ozone layer it is one of the protective layer which is present on the earth surface from 16 kilometer to 60 kilometer 16 to 60 kilometer the big wide range of oxygen layer that is ozone layer it is present so ozone it is an allotrope of oxygen molecule and the ozone it is made, made by the combination of three oxygen molecule you have to remember the ozone layer it is an allotrope of oxygen and that can be made by the com combining the three oxygen atoms and ozone layers the, so what is the importance of the ozone layer here the ozone layer absorbs the light radiations which come from the sun you have to remember some of the most harmful radiations of harmful ray, light rays come from the sun towards the earth surface and that will be the fr from that rays the ozone layer that that will be saved from all the living things which are present on the earth surface ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet rays which come from the sun and that will be helpful to save away from the some of the diseases comes from the ultraviolet rays that is the skin diseases some of the skin diseases which will be caused by the ultraviolet rays why so that ultraviolet rays can be get absorbed by the ozone layer the but due to the human activities this ozone layer this ozone layer get depleted here the holes are going to be started why because the first the ozone layer which is first time it will be for see the decline of ozone layer thickness in antarctica was first observed in 1985 and it was termed as ozone hole see here the ozone hole it is nothing but the thick ozone layer it is present but so what happens here the ozone layer thickness in antarctica was first observed the decline of ozone layer the decline of ozone layer due to the human activities due to the increase in the carbon in the atmosphere the oxygen which is present in the ozone that will be get combined to the oxygen carbon atom which is present in the atmosphere so as the oxygen atom mixed with the carbon atom the ozone layer get depleted in the first time it will be observed at in 1985 on the antarctica region on the antarctica region and that will be named as a ozone hole what happens here what happens if the ozone will the ozone hole will be formed everywhere and what happens here the light rays the dangerous light rays will be comes from the so sun will be uh, will it is freely will be touches the earth surface and that causes some of the harmful activities harmful actions on the living organisms but to get the safety from that harmful light radiations we need to improve our ozone layer but that ozone layer will be get depleted due to the human activity what are the reason of the ozone depletion here to it, this is the ozone layer depleted due to the excess use of CFC. CFC it is nothing but 
chlorofluorocarbon that will be utilized in the refrigerators. So, in a earlier days, the refrigerator must contain it, the refrigerator. It is will be made up of the CFC gases. But nowadays, the refrigerators doesn't contain these CFCs. Earlier days, the humans we choose the refrigerator. It will be made by the CFC. So, more use of the CFC causes the depletion in the uh, ozone layer. And also, the CFC will be utilized in the perfumes also. So, by reducing the use of the CFC, we can we can save our ozone layer here and under one reason under one important reason which causes the ozone layer depletion it is nothing but the nuclear explosion nuclear explosion causes the most effect on the depletion of the ozone layer these are the most important human activities which causes which causes which causes some of the problems on the environment and Another one most important air pollution that is caused by the human activities nothing but the smog. Smog it is a type of the air pollution which we are going to see. The smog it is comes from the two word that is nothing but the smoke and the fog. So the smog it is a one of the air pollution which we are going to see in the air polluted cities at the morning or at the evening or Sometimes at the afternoon also, the environment will be looked very thick blue or a black color. So that is nothing but the smog. We can we are going to call it as a smog. The smog it is nothing but a mixture of smoke and a fog. The smog happens where there is a large number of industries are present. Why? Because that releases a large amount of the smog and fog which is comes in the environment that will be mixed up with that smog and that causes a smog. It is a one type of the air pollution which is caused by the human activities. So this is all about the air pollution. So how the human activities how the effect human activities affects on the environment that is environmental problems caused by the human activities that is all about the one wonderful natural resource that is nothing but the air. Now I am going to discuss another one most important natural resource that is nothing but the water. So water it is a most essential important natural resource which is present on the earth's surface. So it is most important for the plants for the living beings which are present on the earth because it, it will be helpful for the most of the living activities. For example, the all the living activities, the cell activities, the living beings are made up of the fundamental units called the cells. All the cells activities are done with the help of the water here. And also the cell gets uh, some of the minerals, isn't it? Food materials, that food materials from the water here. Why? Because all the minerals are going to be dissolved in the water and that carries by the water. So it is the most important and under one most important natural resource which is present on the earth that is nothing but the water. So what is the necessity of the water? See here. It maintains the uniform temperature of the body. You have to remember the water, it is the most important component. What is the necessity here? It maintains the body temperature. It maintains the body temperature. So the water will be drink, it will be utilized for the drinking for the living organisms like animals and also human beings. Why? Because to maintain the body temperature and all the cellular processes takes place in the water. As I told already, all the cellular processes are takes place in the under the water and water forms the habitat for many plants and animals. So why is the water is necess necessity, the way the wa water it is more necess most necessary here because water forms habitat habitat for many plants and animals so it gives the place to live for the most of the plants and animals most of the animals are present under the water even though we are not going to today's even though in this condition in today's condition we are not going to know about only 10 percent of the animal which has which is present under the water see here we know only about five percent five to ten percent of the animals which are present under the water remember how much amount of the animals present in the under the water so this water gives the habitat for the some of the animals and the plants so it is another one necessity for the water here then 
but due to the human activities as we see in the air pollution due to the sum of the human activities that causes the air pollution like that due to the sum of the human activities that also causes water pollution here so what are the what is meant by the water pollution what are caused what activities which activities causes the water water pollution that will be seen now so water pollution when water is said to be unfit for a drinking and other uses then it is said to be polluted so when we are going to say water is polluted or water water pollution that the water will be polluted that is when the water it is unfit for a drinking and other uses then it is said to be polluted so what are the reasons for the water pollution here the water will be polluted due to the dumping of wastes from the industries to the water bodies if you have to remember the if you have to see the you have to feel that now or you have to imagine here or you have to check here all the big cities which are present on the earth surface are in our country you have to check here all the big cities are present on the land of the on the land or on the bank of the rivers you have to remember clearly all the big cities are present on the banks of the rivers and all the big cities has number of industries all the big cities has a number of industries and all industries are going to dump the waste materials which are present in the industries to the water bodies present near the industries that are nothing but the to the rivers or the ponds so what happens here due to the dumping of the waste materials which comes from the industries that has the some of the many number of harmful materials are present in that waste materials when they are going to mix with the water that will be causes water pollution here so another one it is nothing but washing of cloths animals near the water bodies if you are going to see in the villages in the ponds the people which are present in the villages are they are going to wash their cloths usually in the ponds they are going to wash their animals usually in the ponds and that also causes water pollution here that makes that water it will be not utilized or it will be not it will be unfit for drinking so that causes water pollution here the under one human activity that causes water pollution it is nothing but use of a chemical fertilizers so as as the human beings use some more number of chemical fertilizers why because the human needs are going to be increases here and also humans wants to get a more yield because he wants to become a rich therefore he wants to get a more yield here but what he was going to do to get the more yield he was even he want to use more number of the chemical fertilizers to get the good yield here but when we are going to use more number of the chemical fertilizers or chemicals to the which we are going to spray to the plants which are present in the field that chemicals are mixed with the soil which is present on the field isn't it but when rain comes the rain water flows from the field towards the river that carries the chemicals which are present in the field and that causes the water pollution here so uses using up the la large amount of the chemical fertilizer that is also causes water pollution here and dumping of household wastes so the dumping of the household wastes should to the water bodies that also causes the water pollution here and what are the effects of the water pollution as we know we already know we are going to face number of problems from the water pollution isn't it number of diseases from the water pollution here diarrhea cholera number of water problems which we are going to face due to the water pollution so as possible we don't want to makes our we, we don't want to dump the our waste to the water bodies why because to get the good water here so this is all about the water and the water pollution the another one most important natural resource which is present on the earth surface that is nothing but the soil so it is also most important 
component which is present on the earth. Why? Because all the plants are need the, this soil to grow here. The soil it is nothing but the upper layer of the earth surface that contains the soil. So, the plants utilizes only this soil to grow here. So, what is soil? Soil is the portion of the earth surface consisting of disintegrated rock disintegrated rock and decaying organic material. What is soil? Soil is the portion of the earth surface consisting of disintegrated rock and decaying organic material. The mixing up of all this organic material and the disintegrated rock we are going to call it as a soil. So, you have to remember the upper surface which we are going to see on the earth that is nothing but the soil. But it takes thousands of years to form about 3 to 5 centimeter of the soil. You have to remember it takes 300 years of time to make about 5 centimeter of the soil. So, you have to remember it how, how much time it takes to form the soil here. So, the soil it will be formed by the sum of the actions here. How the soil will be formed or the how the soil will be created. The soil will be created due to the factors of the sunlight, water, wind and leeches that is due to the living organisms and due to the some of the activities here. How the soil will be formed by the sun we will see now. When the sunlight falls on the big sized rocks which are present on the earth surface that will be expands due to the light the heat which, which will produce from the light rays here. So, the big sized rocks which are present on the earth surface are going to be heated with the help of the sunlight and when that rocks will be heated that will be expand somewhat is not it during the day they get the heat from the sun and they expand some, some they expands in their size and what happens during the night the sun will be there is a no sunlight will be present and heated rocks will be cooled down and during the day they they expands due to the heat but during the night they contracts they contracts due to the cool at temperature although due to the cold environment but during the expansion and a contraction of the rock they do not contract and expand expands exactly is so that causes the uneven expansion and contract causes the some of the breaks some of the breaks in the soil so when the some of the breaks in that rocks when the rock will be break here so the pieces of the rock will converted into soil and it takes also many more years so that the formation of the soil from the rocks with the help of the sun it is also takes many time so so many days here so under one uh, important thing so under one uh, creation of the soil step with the help of the water here so when water flows very fastly it carries some amount of the rocks some of the big rocks and some of the small rocks in the flowing up when the water will be flowed with a very uh, fast way the rocks which are present in the water are going to be rub each other so when they are going to rub each other they cracks the some of the rocks and that a time that rocks will be get converted into a soil this is another way how the soil will be formed and another thing i am considering here with the help of the wind you are going to see the big amount of the soil or, or we are going to see big amount of the soil which is present in the desert that is carried by the wind. When wind flows very fastly it carries some amount of the soil and it will be deposited at the one end and that is also under one thing how the soil will be formed here. And under one step by the under one method the soil will be formed with the help of the living organisms one of the plant i am taking here the lichen lichen it is one of the type of the plant which grow on the on the rocks here so when it grows on the rocks it releases some of the chemicals on the rocks so when that chemicals released by this plant that causes the the cutting of that rocks and that when that cutting of that rocks or that 
decaying that of rock will be happened here so due to that decay that soil will be formed so soil will be formed by the these these all steps and it takes large number of days it takes large number of time you have to remember here to make the to make about only 3 to 5 cm of soil it takes about 300 years so you have to remember it is a very long process here so it is the most important com component which is present on the earth surface and that will be more important why it is more important here because all the plants are going to be grown with the help of the soil which is present on the upper surface but this soil will be corroded that it will be blowed due to the some of the human activities and that it will be termed as the soil erosion what is soil erosion here the blowing up of the top soil from the flooding from the water are due to the some of the human activities that will be termed as a soil erosion and a soil erosion causes blowing up of the main important soil at the first layer of the soil which is present on the earth surface if soil erosion happens what happen here the most important soil that will be blow away and the it will be affects on the growth of the plants we get only only little amount of the yield due to the soil erosion here so how we are going to control the soil erosion we are going to control the soil erosion by making the dams why because when the high amount of the rain will be falls that flow of water carry, carries the upper surface of the earth that is upper soil and that is the most important soil here if it carries complete the soil which is present on the earth surface then it will affect on the yield of the plant because the plant wants that upper surface of the soil which is present on the earth surface but how we are going to control this soil erosion by using scientific uh, uh, scientific methods of cropping here scientific methods of cropping scientific methods of irrigation isn't it and by making the dams we can control the flow of water and we can control soil erosion so this is all about the how the soil erosion will be happens and we studied in this session what are natural resources under that the air and water and the soil in next session we are going to study some of the bio geochemicals bio geochemicals which are present on the earth surface okay thank you